to the esteemed Lady Galadriel and the Lord Celeborn. First and foremost, I wish to express my gratitude to you and your Galadrim for cleansing the woods near Dol Guldur. Orcs and goblins have long terrorised our lands near the Anduin, but they shall do so no longer. The men of the Eastfold are forever in your debt. However, I'm afraid I must inform you of more troubling news as well. The White Wizard has betrayed us. Through his accomplice Grima of the Wormtongue, Saruman has poisoned my mind and crippled my body, allowing the men of Dunland to cross the River Eisen unopposed, raiding and burning the Westfold. Even worse, the Dunlendings were joined by a breed of orc never before seen in these lands. Sunlight seemingly does not deter them, and their armour is thick, their shields broad, emblazoned with a white hand. The tide of evil flowing from the Orthanc is seemingly impossible to stem, and thus, my lord and lady, I request your assistance. Fell deeds awake, let this be the hour when the Rohirrim and Galadrim draw sword and bow together. With great respect, Théoden, son of Thangal, king of Rohan. Greetings, my friends, and welcome back for the fourth episode of our Lothlorien campaign in Third Age Total War, Divide and Conquer A.G.O. And if everything goes as planned, then this should be my first upload of 2022. It already feels weird to say it like that, I almost messed it up there. But I'm recording this on the 30th of December, and if all goes to plan, it should come out on January 1st. So please allow me to wish you all a very, very happy new year. I hope all your dreams and all your endeavors and all your hard work pays off. I hope you meet any and all resolutions, if you have any. If you have none, then I respect that because I'm a non-resolution guy myself as well. But uh, yeah, I just wish you all the best. I thank you all from the bottom of my heart for all the support during all of 2021, even during my absence a couple months there where I didn't really upload anything, uh, but you guys still supported me. The channel grew tremendously, about 7k new subs, which is fantastic. Um, yeah, and I, I have no reason to doubt that we can't achieve the same in 2022, and I'm looking very much forward to it. Um, and, you know, what you can expect from me from the new year is nothing different, really. I'm just going to try to make new campaigns, going to try to make every campaign even better than the one that came before it, always aiming to improve, sometimes falling short in terms of making sure that my microphone is recording properly, but we don't talk about that. <laughs> We're going to forget about that. Um, but yeah, I'm not much of a guy to talk about New Year and Christmas, and I don't make those kind of special videos. I've done it in the past, but uh, never really liked doing it. Um, but I'll just you know, take this moment to thank you all and to wish you all the best. Right, where did we leave off? Well, last episode, a lot happened. It was basically two episodes in one, as I had to throw together some stuff. So our realm is looking quite a bit bigger. Most of, if not all of, all of it at this moment, Mirkwood is now in the hands of good factions. Uh, there are some settlements remaining on the borderlands, like Bur Alga. We took that one, but we're going to give it to Dale. Brown Boat, we need to take that one as well. Um, just a couple settlements in the hands of Dol Guldur, and it's kind of my main goal to get rid of the faction as a whole, so we can get one step closer to completing the Havana Union. We do have Kalanon moving towards Dale, because I really want to give Bur Alga to them. The reason I'm not giving it to the Woodland Drum is because... One might say, you know, if you give those settlements to the Woodland Drum, and then you do the Havana's Union, you get those settlements back. But I find that a little bit cheap. I've done similar reasoning back when I did my Reunited Kingdom campaign. People suggested, oh, you can grab a settlement, gift it to Gondor, and then when you reunite the kingdoms, you get the settlement back anyway. That's a little bit cheesy. It makes sense for a settlement like Erin Dolan or Runen, which one is it? Erin Runen, because, you know, it borders them, it's part of the Woodland Realm from a law perspective. It makes sense there, so, you know, that's a bit of an exception I make to myself. Uh, but besides that, I don't want it to use it as kind of a get out of jail for free card. I don't want to cheese it, don't want to abuse it, basically. So that's why I'm gifting these other settlements, which. I'm taking them because I want to get rid of Dol Guldur, I don't care about the settlements all that much, and I would waste too much time trying to get culture up and then moving on to the next settlement, it would waste too much time. I'm better off 
blitzing Dol Guldur a little bit, and the best way to achieve that is by giving these settlements not to myself, not to an ally which I'll join with at some point, but to a different ally. Dale, Erebor, Dowinian perhaps, maybe some of these settlements as well. It makes my borders safer as well, and making them stronger will mean I don't have to fight Rune myself, for example. Uh, same deal with Isengard. Isengard scares me, but if I give Rohan some settlements, then hopefully they can do the dirty work for me, which will be the case for Dan Talad and Dornarak, if I'm not mistaken. After all these many campaigns, I'm starting to memorize the map a little bit better. We're also attacked by the Goblins of Moria. They have taken Fenholm and the, the territory of the Gladden Field, so we now border them, which is not a good thing, because they're going to keep harassing us. So I'm gonna get rid of this army and hopefully try to reclaim Fenholm. Not quite sure if I'll hold on to Fenholm myself or gift it back to the Anduin Vale. I'm kind of inclined to take it and keep it, so I might try and push for Goblin Town, take that as well, so I have a route across Hithaigler. Uh, so I can help out my fellow Noldor. Well, not fellow Noldor, but my Noldor friends in Imladris, but we'll see about that. <laughs> So I got an army here, some Hitherbin Dwarven Travellers and some Lorian Warders. They'll lead the main attack, which is also another opportunity to get a Man of the Hour, possibly. I will get some support from Niben Karden, the general in Erui. I'm not too scared. I don't want to be cocky, but the Master Power is like, uh, kind of close, I guess. I want to control the army myself, but they just have such bad units. Hillman... Uh, 5-4 is not terrible, my cavalry will trample them, same with all these guys. The only exception will be the Uruk Overseers, but I'll make sure my Elbereth Sentinels will prioritize them. And also the Captain will be rather easy to kill, seeing as it's part of a Ballista unit, so I'd prioritize those anyway, and seeing as it's a Captain, it's an added bonus. So they'll get trampled, their morale will be at an all-time low, which it already is. Poor morale, poor morale response, these guys slightly better than these guys, ridiculously bad these guys as well so they're gonna break very quickly these guys do boost the morale of their allies by chanting but I'm not sure if the AI is capable enough to really use that well we'll see all right let's make a save I'll make a third save actually for the start of the campaign or the start of this episode in case I screw up a recording I can actually go back to the beginning of the episode and uh, yeah let's try to take down the goblins of Moria Okie do. I just realized I did a really long introduction there for the episode, and there's still some things I want to talk about. Uh, as much as I'm not a social butterfly in real life, I do end up blabbering a lot in these videos. Um, I'm actually going to put these guys a little bit further away because I want to give my calf some some extra time, and I also really want the, the Elbert Sentinels to join them. Uh, something else I want to mention was about Saruman. As you all remember, he died at the the beginning of the previous episode, of episode 3. Uh, seemingly died fighting Enedwyth, because they were only at war with Enedwyth then. So a random fisherman basically killed a demigod, a Maiar, which, you know, doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So from a lore perspective, I also put this in a comment on the previous video, but I assume most people don't read all the comments. Um, from a lore perspective, I'm just going to pretend that Saruman is still alive. He's still alive and kicking, but he's just leading his armies from... make the trees a bit nicer... from within the Orthanc. It also really doesn't make sense that he'd be leading the armies at the front line, like that always felt a bit weird, but I do appreciate that they want to make Saruman a custom general. Oh, these guys are acting a bit annoying, I just need to get to your ballista. Stop protecting your ballista! Alright, general, join your friends, you'll have plenty of time. I mean, I've been keeping them busy. So from a lower perspective, I'm just gonna assume that Saruman never died, but we'll also not fight him on the battlefield, because that's just not Saruman's style. He'll be leading the troops from within the Tower of Orthanc and Lurtz or Ugluk, whoever is leading the men now. Um, they'll be, you know, the one leading them on the battlefield, which makes a whole lot more sense. There was something else I wanted to say. Oh yes, I really want to thank you for all your support, because... And this was a very interesting statistic for me to encounter. Uh, every episode I've uploaded so far, so three episodes, has always been more popular than the one before it. Usually the first episode always gets the most traction and then it starts to die down a little bit. And the first episode has the most views, but the episodes that followed it, episode 2 and then episode 3 as well, actually got more like initial traction. They got viewed a lot more in the first 3-4 hours of release, which is absolutely fantastic. That really makes the channel grow, so thank you all very, very much. Your enthusiasm has been noticed. And I share it, trust me. 
Sometimes, sometimes I get that itch to like go back to daily uploads, which I used to do. Now it's once every other day, you know. But I say that now when I'm having some time off from work, but that time off is ending rather quickly. Today, the day of recording is Thursday, I'll be starting work back on Monday. <laughs> so, you know, I doubt I'll be able to do a daily upload schedule then. As much as I would like. And also, Miss Izzy is currently in exam season. These guys are guiding me very smart, actually. Very capable AI protecting their ballista. So I also have some more free time with that. Alright, you lads, are you are you doing this on purpose or are you being like super intelligent by accident? I really don't know at this point. I just need to get to your ballista. Damn. Be easy. Complain when the AI is dumb, but also complain when the AI is being smart. Well, they're not being too smart. They're not really using their skirmishes, which they should be doing. But I think they're stuck because we're too close to them, so they think they missed skirmish without getting their... That javelin's off, and now we get a clean charge. There we go. We won't hit the general, though. He's right here. But we will do some damage, hopefully. Grab your lancers. Charge! For the Lady of Light. For Lorinand. All right. Pull out. Pull out. Yeah, who knows? I have been thinking about doing some other stuff. I've mentioned it many times, and you might be like, oh, Izzy, you've said that so many times and we haven't noticed. But, like, Elder Scrolls Total War still kind of want to play that as well. Uh, someone actually asked on the previous episode if I'd do some historical Total Wars, which I've never done historical Total Wars with, like, intros and, and quote-unquote lore building, but it could be a lot of fun. That could be fun. Just to have more of a, you know, historical, accurate perspective. Of course, no campaign in Medieval 2 or any of the other Total War games stays truly oh, they are singing with that. Stays truly historically accurate. I mean Portugal never really invaded Great Britain as far as I'm aware <laughs> as much as they would want it but um, it could still be fun to kind of tie in what is historically accurate to some intros and stuff. Alright. So this first battle will take a while, but it's actually a very important one. The cleaner we get out of this battle, the more troops I can throw towards the Gladden Fields of Fenholm. Alright, my tr cavalry needs to reform the line. Like, did I hit him at the Paranor Fields? Reform the line! No, why did you stop? My Hitherbina being a bit wonky. Alright. Judge! That's a good one. That's a good I feel it in the water. I feel it in the air. Love is all around me, and so is a good cav charge. Yes. Now, my name ain't Quasimodo, but I still got a hunch that we're going to be able to send them routing very, very quickly. I'm just going to wait for my Elbereth Sentinels to pop up. Also, yeah, I haven't showed off the Elbereth Sentinels yet. I did in the lost recording, but, you know... It's called the Lost Recording for a reason, but they look fantastic. They look very, very similar to the Galadrim that is featured in the thumbnail. So there you go. Very, very awesome looking units. They have 11 missile attack, if I'm not mistaken. I'll check their stats later if you want, which is one higher than the the Galadrim archers, which Halder have, as also one higher than the Berio and Goliath that Celeborn has. And they have the same range, I believe, or roughly the same range. But what they do have is one higher tier of accuracy. Like the March Wardens, they have exceptional accuracy instead of the very high that Haldir and Caliborn have. They're going to try to shoot me. Can we kill them before they do so? They're down to two, so they can't man a ballista. They're down to 30, so they can still man all four. So yeah, they're, they're better in a 1v1 situation, but of course it's a much smaller unit size. It's only 38 compared to the... Well, up to 100 and 120, I believe, that Caliborn and Haldir respectively get. So, you know, in an actual fight, they're much more useful. But one guy against one guy, or one elf against one elf, the Elbereth Sentinels would actually come out on top. So there we go. Get them! Yep. That should be... No, there's still three. They can man a ballista. They're still three? Come on, mate. Show them no mercy, what is this? They slaughtered innocent hobbits- I mean, we've slaughtered innocent hobbits too. That's not really a, a measure anymore of evilness, unless we call ourselves evil. Right. Look at these guys. Uh, now we can actually move. Alright. 
Cavalry pull back, walk, get some rest. Rest the horses, give them a good pat, they've been amazing. What an amazing looking unit. I don't know, it's something about the chain mail with like the green cloak, the helmet, it just... Mm. And the shields are also magnificent. Really a standout unit. Alright, so they're just positioned like that. The unit we want to kill first are the Urukovaciers, obviously. Because they're the only reason they haven't broken already. Uh, do the Obered Sentinels cause fear? No. So there you go. Exceptional accuracy. 210 meters range, which is 10 less than Haldir and Caliborn. But 11 missile attack, which is one more. So there you go. Very cool looking unit. Alright. So the Ballista has been neutered. Mm, it's mainly gonna be a morale win. Do we need to stand too close to them? I should probably also spread out a little bit more. Considering they got many more troops than we do. Dwarfs! The Dwarven Travelers aren't too bad either. 127 of them, which is pretty good. As we've seen with the, um, the Hobbits, for example, strength in numbers applies, like, much more to range units than it does to melee units. Even a unit with, like, you know, Snaga Archers, for example, which aren't in this actual army, I think they've got a missile attack of two, maybe even one. But the fact that there's like 250 of them means they actually do good damage, even against, you know, Elbert at Sentinels. They, they do alright. Alright, but now what Elbert at Sentinels are fighting, hitting the Uruk Overseer is the only reason they haven't broken yet, so let's get on with it, get cracking. Ah, oh, beautiful. I also love the sound of their bows, it's, it's such a clean, like, thwip. It's, ah, it's not crude. It's it's refined and slick, like oil, you know? I guess crude can also be unrefined. <laughs> or oil can also be unrefined, so that doesn't really apply. Alright, shoot them. I happily waste all the ammo of the Albert Sentinels just on these Rukovaciers. It's all about morale. Could charge the Orc fighters. No, we're not going to charge anyone just yet. Mm, come on. They're not going down nearly as fast as I would want them to go down. I want them all dead. I do respect them, you know, they're being shot by arrows and their only reaction is like... Rrr, rrr, rrr. It's probably the sound I'd make if I got shot by an arrow for about four seconds before I'd pass out from the shock. Also, you see this? That looks like a whip, baby. And where there's a whip, that is a way. But no, it's not that episode yet. Not yet. For the veterans of the channel, they'll know what I'm talking about. For those that are new to the channel, you'll see in give or take, I don't know, 12 episodes or something. Once we reach Mordor. Oh, they still have 17, 16. That's 16 too many. Right, well, I guess it's time to get closer with the Dwarven Travelers. They have puny Dwarven bows, so they're not nearly as close in range uh, as these guys. But uh, it's actually not too bad. And I guess I'll use my cavalry to finish off the the overseers. Happily use all my ammo. You know what? Let's already give some get some. Oh, there's all the way back to fresh. Those guys, they are pretty quick back on their feet. Let's charge these orc fighters because they have decent morale, average impetuous, which is a whole lot better than poor poor. Judge. Not bad, not great. I think I need to make my line a bit wider. Oh, they're kind of charging. That's perfect time to hit them. Do much more damage then. Skirmish is going down fast. Yes, now we kill so many more. Trample them on the foot. They're already wavering. Look at that. There's still like a thousand of them, and they're already wavering, and that's the ones with the good mura. <laughs> Just imagine how quick the rest will break. Pull back. Those skirmishes don't have any chance. Alright, you guys use up all your ammo. I also have a, like a feeling that these guys fire quite a bit slower, because they have 24 missiles, which is much less than the 32, but it seems they're running out of ammo much faster. So 
So I think they, they are with the Sentinels. I'm not sure if that's a thing that differs between archers, the speed at which they fire, but I, I guess it would make sense. I know there is a difference in crossbows because there's two different reload animations. One's where they turn around, the Parvis animation, and one's where they just hand draw it facing front, which is the quicker animation. So I know there's a difference there, but I'm not sure if there's a difference... There we go, they're already broken. In bows, charge skirmishes, they're throwing javelins at my men, we cannot have that. They might be just wars, but they're still friends. And friends don't let friends get killed. This is a long battle. It's gonna be worth it. Patience pays off. And I also need to be careful with my general. He's no Caliborn nor Haldir. If I send him in, he might very well die. Stop that singing! You're upsetting the locals. I'm gonna have to ask you to stop that shouting. Uh, Oh, look at those numbers drop. Wonderful. Come on, they yell. <laughs> As if there's any hope for you. Hit him again. Hitherbin. Nice. What does that even mean, Hitherbin? Is that an explanation here? No. So they'd give a pronunciation guide, but it would also be nice if... Oh, Mist Knights. Right, I already read that. Right, right, right. Mist Knights. I like that. Looks cool. Mist Knight. Almost sounds like a Marvel hero. I mean, I know there's Moon Knight. I don't think there's a Mist Knight. The there we go. Broken. And that's still with the Udukovas here standing, by the way. Or not? Are they dead? I'm not seeing them anymore. I know there's nine of them left. Right. Um, let's send in the lads. Just so my calf charges are a bit more effective and I don't have to waste good horses, good mist knights. Charge! For Balin! For Galadriel! For Kelebord! For Haldir! Um, for... I don't know, Rumil! Might as well. Charge! You guys are a long way from home, Rudaur scum. It ends today. There we go, the Obered Sentinels going in ham oh, up against some poor goblins. They don't stand a chance. Nice charge. Broken? Doesn't show them with our status. Weird. Very weird. Alright, the Dwarven Travel doesn't need help. We shall grant them that. Who are you fighting? Goblin Infantry? Hmm, you're taking a beating. They're a pretty throwaway unit anyway, so it's, it's okay, I'm not that attached to them. Not breaking yet, no signs of breaking. Interesting. Why can't I toot my horn? For the moment I was worried that he had already died. Is it because he's a reinforcement army? I thought I could still toot his horn then. Guess not. Probably because he's not the main general. Yeah. That is probably the reason. Come on, Goblin Infantry, your morale's supposed to be bad. You're making me look bad. It's going on and on about how shit your morale was. Ah, you go. And then you went and ruined it all by doing something stupid like fighting to the death. Charge him up! Come on, Agmar scum! There we go. Still killed like a solid 80% before they broke, which is quite a lot, but it's okay. I'm still banking on the fact, or the idea, that I'll get a man of the hour from this. Alright, and uh, we have it. That is more than enough. We lost, let's see, 38. We'll probably heal some. 32, 6% healed. That's pretty good. Dorsithion, quite a nice result there. About a kill death ratio of 1 to 10, which is a little subpar, but yeah, the Hitherbin killing 700. The Dwarven Traveler is actually killing a lot more than the Elbera Sentinels. Then again, they were prioritizing the Uruk Overseer, so kind of makes sense. But there we go, the Goblin Invasion has been dealt with for now. Let's see if we can set up a counterattack of sorts. There we go, execute them. Don't even think twice about it. Man of the Hour, yes! Captain Dorsithian, and well deserved. 
well deserved. He's a siege expert already. He hasn't even seen a single siege, but he's hot, so hot and ambitious. And he never blinks in the face of adversity. That is my kind of guy. Reminds me of myself a little bit. <laughs> All right. Ooh, more mercs. Famine pirates. <laughs> I always feel inclined to get it just because it's such a meme unit. Then again, to be fair... Now, I was about to say they'd be good against wargs, and I don't really have a counter against wargs, but I do have the, the warders, so kind of have a counter. Let's push north. I'm willing to take the risk. Even though the Gladden Fields are quite a bit further up north. That's Fenholm. I mean, I wouldn't mind if the Anduin Vale took it for themselves, but yeah. I also need to relocate Cursed Lurts. So if we get a little Fog of War, lifting of the Fog of War, then I need to make good use of that. Besides that, I don't think there's anything else I need to do. I am building in most places. I'm actually not building in... I'm building in one place. Because I can't afford it. Alright, let's actually see if we can destroy some stuff in... Because I'm about to sell it, so, you know, this doesn't do anything. Uh, I'm going to give it to Dale, so I don't want to make it too, like, meh. But how much would this give me? 700. Could destroy all of it and the deal build it up themselves. I kind of need the money. The AI cheats anyway, so they can afford all these buildings just fine. Let's see. I'll I'll take away like buildings they won't really need all that much. Like a war breeder, they don't really need that much. It's a little bit of extra cash. Cam guard, they do need that. They do need the slave quarters as well because it's like the main hub building. Yeah, okay, we'll leave it. Yeah, we'll leave it at that. I could squeeze out a little bit more money, but maybe we can ask Dale for some money in exchange for the settlement. Depends on how much cash they got. Blacksmith would be interesting just to make my troops even better. Hmm. Yeah. Then wasn't I training a unit developer at Sentinels? Did they complete that training? Did I just Where are they? I can't remember. Oh, it's this guy, isn't it? Yeah, it was that guy. Edraikar. I don't want to build too much there because I feel like it's at risk of being taken by Isaac. I feel like I'm on Lang and Karasgarath are one of my safest settlements. So let's build something here that's worthwhile. An art gallery. Blacksmith. Uh, I don't really need any of these builds. I need more money. I'll get some farms in Austin Gale, perhaps? Unless if I can get a port at Arui. Did I already build a port? I already did build a port. Mm, I feel like Arui is going to be my main money maker. I can't really get anything that is worthwhile right now. I could save some money and try to go for the mines. Nah, well, let's not do that. Can I get a port at Achnot Yon? No. Edrakan? Yes. Let's save up for the port at Edrakan, why not? I know I just said I wasn't going to build anything there, but... Ports are really good. They might just be, like, the best building. Oh, right, I need to do this battle as well. Ah, it's a good thing I didn't press the end turn yet. I feel like they're some of the best money makers in the game. So. Right, that's trash. What have you got, Zaglag? Nothing all that much. Oh, right, let's save. Whoa, Black Betty, Zaglag. All right, we have the Super March Warden Brothers, so we should be quite all right. I do have the Hitherbin in case we need to do something special, but I don't think it'll be necessary. Simply shoot and kill. Shoot isn't really the the best term for it. Let loose some arrows. Where are they? They're supposed to be over... Oh, there they are. Such a small army. Now, these marchers also have exceptional accuracy, so the fact that it's just a small unit shouldn't, shouldn't be too annoying. Except if they run, of course, and they're just quite annoying. All right. Don't chase them, Rumil and Orofin. For those of you who have uh, recently watched the movies, or for those of you with a very good memory, Rumil and Orofin actually show up in the the Fellowship of the Ring. The the accompany Haldir when the uh, well the Fellowship encounters him. So that's also where those uh, pictures came from. They're actually from the movies. They're never really explicitly stated as being Rumen and Orofin or even being any notable March Warden. They're just kind of there. The, the same thing happens with Glorfin, though. I'm pretty sure he's actually, like, credited as being in the movie The Return of the King at the coronation of Aragorn. 
but no one really knows who he's supposed to be, so, you know. Same with, um, Imrahil. He's also supposedly in the movie, though never really explicitly stated. But yeah, there we go. And the reason that they don't really interact much with the Fellowship, Rumel and Orofin, is, is actually quite simply because they don't really speak Westron, whilst Haldir does. So they only speak uh, Sindarin and Quenya, I suppose. But no Westron, which is why they're just kind of doing their own thing. I expect, except he's speaking Westron right now, so you know. Maybe they just don't want to interact with these dastardly foreigners in their lands. <laughs> it's a possibility. Right, this army is very similar to the one we just crushed. Except there's just more of them. Alright, once they're in range, you go ham on those maulers and absolutely destroy that unit. Let's play from the perspective of an orc. La di da di da, waltzing up the hill. Nothing's happening. Are you sure the enemy's that way? Um, are you guys fighting? Oh, there we go. There we go, they've started fighting. La di da di da, oh no! Machine gun fire! They're in the trees! Look at these guys. I love the Oak Moors. I don't know why. I really like that unit. I like playing against them. I like playing with them. This is such a fun, readily available unit. They just... I don't know. I really don't know what it is. Yeah. Still sad that Rumil nor Orofin get a special ability. I really feel like they should get at least Light of Elbedeth. If I remember correctly, in like the old Third Age, maybe in old Dak as well, I think all the Elven Generals got the Light of Elbereth special ability. I was kind of assuming they did in AGO as well, which I think I mentioned in the beginning of episode 1, but I was like, holy shit, if they all get that ability, then that's quite broken. So in a way, it's a good thing they don't all get that ability, but I'm also a little bit saddened that they don't. There we go. Let loose! Rain arrows upon them, there we go. Nook, draw, and loose! Follow the arrows, the Izzy cinematic camera, pew, 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 pelting them down. We've already killed half of that Orc Mauler unit. More! Kill as many as you can. We want to keep the army fresh. we got some siege battles ahead of you. And whilst the March Wardens aren't terrible in melee, they're not quite as good as their brother or Daddy Caliborn, who is not their daddy before anyone starts correcting me. I just like calling him Daddy Caliborn. Yeah, come on. 52. Shaken. Not stirred. They're just gonna stand there. I don't understand why the AI does that so often, but hey. I'm not gonna complain, man. Sometimes the AI is smart, sometimes the AI is completely brain dead. This is one of the latter scenarios. I kill a couple more for fun. And the road towards Dornarak should be wide open. I made sure that one guy died, so the kill-death ratio guys don't have their calculators blow up in their face when they try dividing by zero. Besides that, it was a pretty clean kill. Execute the poor one prisoner. Probably from that Hitherbin charge at the end. Uh, not the end, but at the end of the, the first army. There are no trees, my man. This is where the endwives uh, should have been, but yeah, about that. Right, what is this cursed settlement? Oh, there we go. Oh, look at this filthy guy. Halloween's over, mate. Take off that mask. Oh, Warg Marauders. Hmm. A little bit frightening. Only a little bit. Not enough to actually... Uh... Can you build it in one turn? No. Shame. Doesn't matter all too much, though. Um, You, diplomat, go towards Rohan. Because we're going to gift them a settlement, and then we're at the end of our turn, right? I got a little bit of extra cash, enough to build a port? No. Sadly not. Okay. Um, yeah. I'm always scared that I'm forgetting something. But I think I've done everything I can or should do. And there we go. But yeah, I'll be celebrating New Year's Eve tomorrow with Miss Izzy and uh, some of her friends. We're going to eat... It's called gourmet in Dutch. I'm not sure if it's a internationally known thing, but it's like you sit around a table, there's like little side dishes, and then there's like a, a hot plate in the middle, and you just put like random stuff of meat on it. It's kind of like a fondue, but 
instead of you know putting it in oil frying it basically you put it on a hot plate and grill it oh i need to check 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 where is lutz i didn't see him but that's also a good thing because i didn't see him approaching i think he's here because look isengard took the westfold where was lothlorien when the westfold fell in lothlorien you punk uh, there's a big army here. Is it Lurtz? No, it's not. It's ugly. Oglur, sorry. Misspoke there. Where is Lurtz? Don't tell me he's laying siege to the Helm's Deep, because then I need to haul ass over there. No. Interesting. So they didn't actually take Foldberg, but they took Guineyard. Most interesting. Okay, so far, so good. Relatively calm. I think the snow is slowing me down a little bit. Let's build one a bit closer. Do I dare cross into Goblin Land? Of course I do. If only I could park my ass on the bridge, that would be a little bit better. Ooh, I can get some Bjorning Warriors. They're quite good. That armor piercing, frighten enemy infantry as well. They would be quite useful against the Gobbos. Same with these Bjorning Raiders. Hmm. That is interesting, but first let's get that port. We'll see, I got 800 left. Is that enough for a Bjorning warrior? No, that's 20 gold. Uh, we might be able to squeeze 20 gold out of deal <laughs> in exchange for a settlement. I'm sure they'll be willing to give me that. Yes. Hello, Dale. I know you're in money trouble, but I'm only asking for literally 20 gold. So, uh, it's... No, I don't need to demand a settlement. I was, I was thinking, like, which settlement is it? It's Bur Algorite. Yeah last one in the list and you're gonna give me 20 gold coins it's for a bjorning warrior unit it's a good investment king brand generous watch them be like uh we only have 19.9 .9 coins so uh could you lower the price a little bit there we go it's for the greater good my man it's for the greater good and yes they get a bunch of free units privateer cavalry that's it's a very strong unit so you'll clean up those orcs for me i need to clean them up because I'm in their zone of control and I need my movement. Loon lag. That's an extra 300 gold coin if I kill them and they're going to be pretty easy. And then we can move towards Brown Boat, which is most exciting. No, I don't. Ah, I shouldn't have saved over Lorien 3. Damn it. Wrong file. <sighs> right, anyway, let's get rid of them. Okie doke. The reason I didn't want to save over Lothorian 3 is because that's the one I made at the beginning of the turn. And in case my audio fucks up, which does remind me at the end of this battle, I'll make sure that my recording's going well. Then I can re-record just the t this episode, you know. Or parts of it, if necessary. But, um... Yeah, I saved over it now, so there you go. I really should do that, make that a habit. Saving at the beginning of every recording so I can always dial back the time. Use my time machine for good, instead of safe scumming battles, which I have been accused of doing. It's not really the case, but okay. Um, but yeah. I saved over it now because I'm an idiot, and, well... Yeah. <laughs> I am an idiot. There we go. Never said I wasn't. Alright, well this is just sitting and, and watching them die. Like, I got a feeling like they I used to be more aggressive. They would still sit back if they were the ones defending, but if you killed like, I don't know, 20% of their army in like skirmish or even less than that, they'd start moving forward. And I felt like that was a capable way to code the AI, you know. If I'm defending, but I've already lost that amount of my army, then defending clearly isn't working, so perhaps I should be aggressive. You could also cheese that relatively easily by sending out your archers first, shooting them, and then hiding behind a pike wall because you know they're going to be aggressive. But, you know, this ain't working either, and now they go into hiding. I'm not sure why it took them so long. <laughs> look at these rocks, or rather, look at the plants. For some reason, they turn into Minecraft blocks. Oh, they broke the moment I got close. There we go. Oh no, I didn't lose anyone! We can't do a kill death ratio now, no! Not for this battle, at least. It's infinite! But it's not really infinite, because you can't divide by zero, so... It is, uh... A question for MIT, I'm afraid. Boom. Clean them up for you, Dale. There you go. Sorted the house. And trimmed the hedges at the same time. And I can go all the way to Brambo. How wonderful is that? I don't need these lads. I got some bad warriors waiting for me. Right, let's take Brambo. 
Mozu. I know that Uruk or Ork. He's in the movies in Asgiliath, I'm pretty sure. He makes like a weird sound. If you if you watched the movies recently, you know what I'm talking about. Or is it Minas Tirith? I can't remember exactly. One of those battles, and he makes like this weird clicking sound. It's always stuck with me. Unless I'm mixing up my orcs, I'm fairly certain that's him. Anyway, he's a cruelly exacting tax man. Well, if there's one thing I don't like as a Belgian, it's friggin' taxes. So, let's liberate these peoples from the, the yoke of excessive taxing by Dol Guldur and its henchmen. And let's kill Mozu. Okay, though, just the village, so this shouldn't be too hard. I can just shoot them and get on with it. This settlement, I'm actually more inclined to give to Dorwinian. Because Dale's not really doing all that much at the moment, whilst Dorwinian is already fighting with Rune, so they can use all the help they can muster. And, well, there's no kind of help like getting Brownboat, the greatest settlement in the existence of all Middle Earth. Stalkers, I'm pretty sure, are javelins, right? They're not headhunters, yeah, they're javelins. Another custom general bites the dust. No, oh, where are you going, mate? Where are you going, Mozu? Yeah. Not so cool now, eh, with your tax money. Ready your bows. Are you abandoning the village? We will rename Brown Boat before we gift it to Dorwinian. Because unlike Dorwinian, we are 100% pure blood elves, not some kind of weird mix match. It's also kind of full circle, because Dorwinian was the first campaign, or well, I, I was in the middle of it, I'm pretty sure, of uh, 2021. So it'd be nice to give them some settlements to start off 2022, right? Oh no, they're coming too close! Get him, Haldir. Mad Dog Haldir comes in again, they're not even using their javelins. Sit back and enjoy the show, kind of. Oh my god, Halder, you maniac! Holy. <laughs> well, that guy's dead. Uh, at the very least, he won't be making any children goblins. Do it again, that leg sweep was fantastic. Like, he swooped his leg up and then. Oh, look at the decapitation! Halder, you're a beast, my lad. Chop. Bounced off the shield. Halder doesn't care. He's getting poked. He doesn't care. He's just menacingly walking towards that goblin. Chop. Block. And stab. Whew. Do the leg sweep. I want to see the leg sweep. Or is that only a charge animation, possibly? He keeps doing that move. The Obi-Wan versus Darth Maul move. Chop. I'm surprised they're not breaking yet. Probably because there's... Yeah, there's no one on the town square. The banner carrier wishing he was with the rest of his flock. Ah. Actually, I thought Mozo was still alive, but he's already dead, so it doesn't matter. There we go, another clean grab of another nice settlement. Brown boat! Yes. Boom. I do want to give special thanks to Kalion. He is a bit of our law master. Because he has already informed me. I'm going to occupy it. Uh, that brown boat, if translated literally to Sindarin, is apparently, and I hope I pronounce it right, Rosk Lund. So there we go. Uh, anything I can destroy? Butchery, how much is that? 266. The armory, that does work for the AI. It doesn't really do much for me, but for the AI it works, so I'll keep it. Yeah, now nah, I'll, I'll leave everything. Yeah, we don't really have movement points, so I can just skip my turn. And I really want to give it to Dorwinian, but my diplomat is going to take a while to get there. As you wish. Unfortunately. I I can give him an extra turn, but yeah. My Thor. Refers to a warrior who possesses a great skill with weapons. Okay. So Caliborn now has his own person on My Thor. I know there are other content creators, YouTubers that teleport yes. diplomats that don't make a fuss about that. I don't know. I, I think that makes things way too easy. I don't really like that, so... I don't do it. So there's Burst Southis. I can't imagine that the Golder has... Maybe they got one more settlement more in this direction. Kind of doubt it, though. We're still waiting the one turn. Yep, and then we'll invade Dornarak. Which we'll give to Rohan. Don't tell me they're under attack. Nope. Tirithanduin is pretty much abandoned, though. Eomer is just hiding there. <laughs> he's banished, and that's why he's all the way over there. 
Uh, right, I want these Bjornings. However, I'm gonna risk it, because 230 upkeep is nothing to scoff at, and I'm pretty sure I can still get them next turn. And then they can move towards Fenholm. They only have three units in there, that'd be easy, but I'm not sure. I don't think it gets updated, so. Right, anything else? Yeah, I got a mission, right? What's the mission? Take Rockburg. I want to. I, I really want to, but it's quite a risky. You know what? I'll, I'll keep that mission. It's 15 turns. Not like I can get rid of it anyway, but I'll, I'll keep it in mind. We might use it. We might do it. We'll see. Okay. And then Veil Range of the North. Good. pre and Dol Amaroth. Good, good, good. The Guild, the Bladesmith Guild in Boralga. Meh. Besides, I already sold Boralga, so how does that work? If I were to accept it, I wonder what would happen. I did accept it because I don't have the money for it, so it doesn't matter, but I wonder what the game would do about that. Right, these Girthen are no longer needed in Amunlank. I will send them home for retraining. Um, do, 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 do. Yeah, I'll keep those troops around. That's all going as planned. Do we have anyone else lying about that's not really needed? The sentries. I could... I'm going to move him in the direction of Burr South. Is they're hiding. Go hiding. Yep, there you go. Uh, and then they can join these friends to take Burr South. It's just as a bit of extra support. Because it is a town, so it does have some walls. Not that it really matters all that much. And you are going to continue scouting ahead for me. I just need to get a good idea of where there is still Dolguldur land. Alright, um, yeah. I kind of like that with the Mirror of Galadriel or Palantir, Toggle Fog of War. You only get like a short glimpse, so you need to make good use of it. It's kind of annoying when you get all these pop-ups, but like, at the same time I want to know where Lurtz is, but I also want to check how many settlements Dolguldur has. Lurtz I need to check on the map itself, the campaign map, whereas Dolguldur settlements I can check on the minimap bottom left. So, we'll keep our eyes peeled for that. Oh, hello Kruklur, where the hell did you come from? That's annoying, he might go for the Rui. I might have to send some reinforcements over. Alright, oh, we didn't get a toggle for war there. Unfortunate. Dance Guild in Austin Gale, as much as I love dancing. That's Griath under attack, okay. Right, 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 you have to apologize that I don't read all those messages, but I've been playing the game a little bit too long for that. Logarth. Oh! Lagaran, there you are, mate. I've been searching forever for you. I assumed you were dead. Huh, he's still alive. Uh, did he? Castellan's right, yeah. Okay. I opened it and then I didn't really process it. So there's a rune. Hmm. If I take Logarth and keep it, I'd be bordering rune. I don't want to do that. How many Lothorian campaigns would border rune in like 40 turns? <laughs> it's a bit crazy. Yes, my lord. Yes. Alright, towards Lorwinian we go. If only I could, I cannot do that. Mm. Uh. I'm just thinking. Right, first things first, let's take Donorak. Come, my brothers. Those guys aren't joining because they're too far away. So we got Yagaz with his Orc or, uh, Walk Marauders, and we have the Orc Maulers there. Shouldn't be too difficult, though it is a castle, so, you know, be a little bit wary of that. Uh, let's try to shoot them. The Hetherbin probably won't see much action. Uh, we should be alright. Yeah, we'll be fine. Put an end to this evil. Oh, look, snow. It's a pretty poopy looking castle, mate. And again, you do have ramparts, so I want to be a little bit careful. They're in range, shoot them! The, mm, who knows, the wargs might even try to sally out. Are you hitting anything? No. I'm just a little bit worried that the moment I start battering down the gate, I'll send out the walks. Let's see if we can get some volleys off on the maulers. They're actually in a pretty decent position. Not anymore. Still getting hits off. You're gonna run out? No? Uh, kinda. He's running out. Okay, perfect. And his wargs aren't. You idiot. Brave but foolish, my Dolguldur friend. 
Shoot those pricks. Give them Lothlorien steel or whatever our bows and arrows are made of. Yes. That's going to make my life so much easier. He's like, come on lads, let's help them. Alright, chief. So they're selling out, so my Hetherbin need to be close. Point blank. He died. Point blank volley. Good. Alright, March Wardens. You stay on alert for those lads. We want to shoot the Warg Marauders. They could crush my March Wardens. Your infantry is routing, mate, so I'm not sure if you wanna if you wanna do this. It's annoying that his infantry is still alive though. Like I wanted to kill the full unit. Now they can still man towers. If I can get you guys a little bit closer and a bit of an angle, you might be able to hit the wargs. Even a few volleys would make my future life quite a bit easier. Now we are taking hits from the towers, I assume. If that had been, you need to make sure those wargs don't full frontal charge me, because that would be painful. Intercept them, come on! Oh, it's so close! Intercept, intercept, intercept! Oh, it worked, it worked! Pull back, if that had been, your job is done. Well, not done, done, but this part of your job is done. Oh, see, your job came back, just like that. Orcs creating job opportunities since the first age. Alright, shoot them. Good, good, good. We're taking down the wargs with minimal casualties. Wonderful. You guys are no halded, but you're not bad either. Yes, fill them with arrows. I love that. He's running. Okay, so General's still alive, but just barely. Most of his friends are dead. Not all his friends though, unlike the the Turbo Negro song. If any of you are into punk rock, which you might be. Alright, okay, those towers are actually hurting me a little bit. If I can pull back just a little bit further, we should be out of their range. Kind of pelting me a little bit. Okay, we're out of their range, but we're still in range. Shoot them! I don't mind if you use up all your ammo. Just make sure they're dead so we can get the ram without being completely destroyed by their towers. Hmm. We're not hitting too many, despite our accuracy. They are on the wall, so they got like the palisade to hide behind. Oh, we're not hitting. No, we're doing okay. I think we might have enough to get all of them dead. Yes, cluster up. Yes. Yes, perfect. We are attacking you. Very observant. Poor guys. Anticipating death. Don't tell me this one guy's gonna be the sole survivor. Nope, he isn't. Well, no birthday for you in 2022. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to have a birthday in 2022. I'll be turning 28. Old man, is he? Whew. I shouldn't think too much about it, but now that that 30 is approaching rapidly, <laughs> it starts to become a little bit scary. I feel like I should be an adult at this point, but no. Well, it's never really happened. Maybe it'll still come. Maybe wisdom will come to me in 2022. But for now, I enjoy playing my 16-year-old strategy game set in a fantasy realm. And there's nothing wrong with it. I don't, I, I don't understand some of the stigma. And I assume most of you guys who are watching this don't have that stigma because, well, you know. You're here watching me play this game, but that some people have against like video games in general, like the same kind of people that would sit 12 hours a day watching the TV and have their brains turn to mush. They'd be like, "Oh, video games is a waste of time." Like, I, I don't understand that. If you want to watch TV all day, like, go ahead. I, I don't mind if that's what you find entertaining, then do it. I find video games entertaining. Sometimes I too like to just watch TV, but like. In a way, I actually prefer playing video games over TV just because there's some interaction, you know? Instead of stuff happening to me, I do stuff myself. It's more interactive. And also, you know, keeps my brain a little bit sharp, these strategy games. 
I mean, I'm too dumb for a game like Hearts of Iron or Europa Universalis, but these kind of games, you know, still requires a bit of strategy or some thinking. I love how that wog is moving, but his tail isn't. Look at that, it's staying perfect. I hope that's his tail, at least. Like, that's so uncanny. Anyway, there we go. Alright, let's start looking for these Entwives, huh? Pretty good result, considering it was a siege. Not the greatest kill death, but... Yeah, again, this was an offensive siege, so it's actually pretty reasonable. Boom! Another settlement. I was about to say to add to my collection, but I don't really add it to my collection, seeing as I'm immediately leaving afterwards. Uh, zero gold coins gained from looting. What? What is this horrible settlement? It's got mines, but... Uh, no, Rohan, it's yours. Take it. Unless... Can I... Mm. I, I thought maybe if I can take two settlements in one go, then possibly we'd be able to give them two at the same time, but... Nah. Hey, Omer, I have a present for you. You're bankrupt, so I don't even need to bother asking for money. You guys are so damn lucky with me. There you go, Rohan. Don't lose it now. I hope you get some free units. Just a bunch of Rohirrim. No, they don't actually got anyone. That's annoying. I'll have to get rid of this guy, otherwise he'll take the settlement for himself. Gobla! I have to shoot your goblins! I'll just quickly do this off camera but show you the result, because, you know, I'm just gonna shoot them. It's not gonna be too interesting to watch. Oh, there you go. That battle went exactly as I anticipated. So here is the result. Just shot them, they just kind of stayed here. What is interesting though is, look at the sky. You can tell we're getting closer to Mordor. This place is just pure evil, man. But yeah, there we have it. Cleaning up for Rohan. I'm such a nice elf. I am quite literally the nicest elf. Oh, no. No, don't, don't, you better not take that. Oh, he's gonna... Because they're at war with Rohan, right? So there's nothing stopping them from doing it. Yeah, God damn it. Hmm. Hopefully he, you know, Fs off. But, uh, yeah, it's not a nice Sindarin way of saying it, but uh, did it anyway. Right, um, yeah, I'm just going to wait with Rosklund, because I don't want it to go rioting and all that jazz. What I do want to do is take Fenholm. Actually, I need to be careful, because there's an army here, right? Kruklur. I shouldn't have moved Mardion, I'm an idiot. Uh... Well, he might go for Erui, so I'm just gonna put these guys here. I might have just thrown away Mardion's life. So be it. Mistake on my part. Um, Alright, let's get these Björnings. And then take this place. Yeah, not too many defenders. Perfect. Heavy Goblin Crossbow is interesting. Interesting. Did I click the wrong button? Yes, I did. Zugdash, Conqueror of Goblin Town. Damn, Balance of Power is not... I thought we'd be... You know, we'd be laughing, but... Let's see, Goblin Infantry, nothing crazy, okay. Crossbows, I should be able to outrange them, yeah, and shoot them. So there shouldn't be too much of a problem, but what does this guy have? 188 of... Please don't be halberds, that'd be a problem. Oh, crossbows as well. Hmm. Interesting. Well, I do say I can outrange them, but then again, I only have one archer. So it's going to be kind of crucial to close the gap... I've got two archers with the Travelers, but, you know, there's only 38, 67, it's not that many archers. If I can close the gap with the Björning Warriors quite fast, we should be alright. It's going to be a pain either way, though. It's going to be a tough fight. It's going to be a real tough fight, but I'm willing to take the risk. Let's go. Let's take down the goblins. Alright. Let's check out these Bjorning Warriors. We have checked them out in the previous battle, right? Or were they not in that battle? But they use the old model of the skin changers. Which uh, looks makes them look quite a bit more menacing than how they used to look. Now they, they look like absolute beasts. Um, I have a bit of an idea. As in, I can use this hill as kind of natural cover. And if I can then waltz here, it'd be a relatively short sprint towards the town square. Even this section is quite short. So in a way, if I want to go for a quick melee, that's probably my best bet. I shoot them from this side. 
if they do become aggressive, I can always grab my Hetherbin to go assist on the other flank. But you guys, I want you to hug this section here. They might try to shoot... Oh, they're actually moving out. What is this? Positioning is going to be so important. Stupid ponytails. I have nothing against people with a ponytail, by the way. I just have something against people who are bald on top and have a ponytail in the back. Like, no, no. Don't do that. Just no. If you are one of those people, there's a New Year's resolution for you. Just don't. Alright, who's the general? He's the one staying. Staying and going. Dying, more like. The other guys are chasing me, which is actually perfect. Don't let them get any volleys off. If I can close the gap and kill that unit in melee, that would be perfect. The crossbows, that is. But it seems the infantry is going to oh, block me a little bit. We are shooting them. They're not returning fire because they have poor range. Alright, they're going this way. I want my Bjorning warriors to be fighting them, because they have armor. I mean, it looks like armor, kinda. So if my Bjorning warriors can catch them, the warders can keep the Goblin infantry busy. We'll help them out with some calf charges. So we hit them here, they're gonna pause. The Bjornings will catch up to them. They won't get a single shot off on my Elwoda Sentinels. Okay, go back. They're chasing my Hetherbin. Are you running back? Interesting. I can't allow that though. I'm gonna keep my Hetherbin in position. Come on, skin changers. Uh, Bionic Warrior, sorry. The different model is gonna take a little bit to get used to. Okay, you're standing a little bit close there. It's fine. It says they're fighting missiles, but I'm not actually fighting. Probably because of the, the hill block in that path. Okay, we've caught up to them. Now the Hetherbin can step aside. Now these Bjorning warriors should have a really good time against these heavy- Look at them! <laughs> chop right in the forehead, trying to chop off that dumb ponytail. No, 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 they're running again. Oh, I need to help my warders as well. Hmm. We'll be fine. But killing the actual conqueror of Goblin Town would look quite good on my resume. Yeah, he's tanky. The armor is actually helping them already. Don't let them run! Oh, come on, man. And I really need to help out my warders as well with cab charges. My cab is needed everywhere. They're gonna start fighting, aren't they? Yeah, no. Okay, fuck them. If they want to run, so be it. We'll just surround the Goblin Infantry and call it a day. For the first attack, that can... That can count. Then we can surround them and attack them from all sides, make sure they can't get any missiles in whatsoever. That's the thing, the balance of power says we're going to lose because they're accounting for them, you know, using all their ammo pretty much. That won't be the case. We're going to force the crossbows in melee and they're just not that good in the melee. So We'll be laughing all the way to Goblin Town, probably not because I'm going to run low on troops. That's okay. If we take this settlement, it should also stop the other army, that small army, from actually going after me, because the goblins will no longer border me. Don't tell me you're firing, you should not be in range. How much is your range? 150 there, 140. So as long as the Dwarven Travelers aren't in range, and the goblins are definitely not in range. But they are bloody tanks, though. Alright, look at them. Almost feels like we're doing the Anduin Vale campaign after all. Again, I reiterate, I really thought they would have gotten more votes in the previous poll, but no. Unfortunately, well, not unfortunately, I'm enjoying myself very much with Lothorian, don't worry. But, uh, you know, surprisingly, they didn't. Breaking? Only Dying. Enemy force Both. Prisoner of us. Makes no sense. Um, uh, okay, they're coming after me. 
Can't have that. However, it is a good distraction for me to sneak in my Bioning Warriors. And if you're able to manage to, you know, sneak in guys like that, not exactly the sneaky type, then you're doing a pretty good job. But those crossbows would shred through my building waters if I, you know, let them. So, yeah, we got the angle right. They're not going to get too many volleys off. Uh, Hitherbin, if you can go to this approach, that'd be perfect. Warders, if you can go the long way around. We've already softened them up quite a bit. 54% already dead. Then again, that is our weakest force. Alright, this is a bit of a dangerous moment. This is where the Bjornings could potentially take a volley or two. One volley is good. I can live with that. It's almost unavoidable. Two volleys would be quite a bit worse. There we go, that's volley one. Run, run, run! Why did you stop? This is really not the time to stop, my man. Ooh, yeah, that is bad. Come on, come on, come on. We all knew this was going to happen at some point. Keep moving. Just bite through the pain. It's just a bolt. There we go. Oh, they still... Okay, they didn't get that fully off. But we need to, like, close the gap a little bit better. Are they going to be still fighting? Alright, there we go. Now we're in melee. They pull out their swords. I do like the look of these guys. Problem is we're fighting on the town square, so, you know... The AI gets infinite morale there, so even if we kill the general early on, it won't matter. At least I don't think it matters. Uh, that wasn't really anything special. Oh, there we go. Make sure they don't get any more volleys off. And now the Bjorning Warriors should be having a fieldy against these lads. Look at these guys. Chop, chop! The Virgin Goblin versus the Chad Bjorning Warrior. Look at the size difference! Oh my lord! <laughs> the difference between 5 foot 10 and 6 foot 1. <laughs> chop chop! Alright, none of them are fighting. The Albert Sentinels are almost out of ammo. I will send them in in melee. The beautiful bastards. Come on. In you go. Dwarves, you can actually go a little bit closer as well. Passive Power is not wholly convinced, but I think it's in the bag now that we've closed the distance. Like, it's just a matter of killing them now. General's on this side. Is that him? It looks like it's him, yeah. He looks quite a bit taller and more menacing than the other orcs. Not smarter, though. This guy's still trying to load his crossbow. They're actually getting a volley off on my Elvedad Sentinels. That is incredible, seeing as you're in melee, supposedly. So let's pop a quick shield wall. Just so we can push in deeper. And stop them from actually firing. It's bullshit that the AI can do that. Like, you're in melee. Come on, mate. You're not supposed to still be fighting. That makes it quite, you know, OP to have a crossbow unit. There we go. They've pulled out the swords, we use up our ammo, and then we go in melee. Oh no! Get up! How did he die? He was stuck in an animation with this guy, but then his animation got cancelled, but this guy was still like, well, you know, lying on the floor here. Might as well suffer a heart attack and just <laughs> perish. Valinor be damned. Alright, Bunings, how we looking? Pretty good. I know I'm saying Björning's wrong, but I just like doing it the the Swedish way. The Björnings! Björk, Björk, Björk. Swedish chef, anyone? Alright. That general is a tough one. What is he, anyway? Wait, he wasn't the general? I guess he wasn't, because he's dead. Oh. Who was the general, then? Hello? I don't notice any orcs looking different. This guy looks a little different, but not... Is it enough to be, like, considered a general? No, I don't think so. Who is general? Don't use your crossbow, you cheating punk! Etherbin, 
give them a charge because they don't want to listen. The reason I'm not using my Hitherbin as much is because they can't actually properly charge inside the tower. Like, sometimes they can, but most of the time, Calf. Now we killed him, I've still no idea who it was. They're outside the town square, actually. Yeah, we can get them to route. Wonderful. Right, that was a little bit harder than I expected, but still a pretty clean win. We have taken the settlement. So there we go. We have liberated the hobbits, yes! There you go, hobbits. I've killed some of you, but I've liberated the others, so we're even now, okay? Let's just call it even and, you yeah, know, that's that. Boom. The only problem is, of course, taking Fenholm is one thing. Holding it a little bit more difficult. Uh, they don't like me already. I'm just going to sack it. There we go. Now they're happy. A little bit of sacking gets you pretty far, eh? Decently wealthy settlement at 727. Uh, I can get rid of this. That doesn't do anything for me. I'll get the artist studio for the culture. I already have 2%. Look at that. Um, yeah, the problem is there are going to be more goblins coming in from the high pass. Well, at least the Anduin Valley, which is Maethelberg, is still in the hands of the Anduin Vale. But I don't really understand where these goblins came from. Because this is all like Khazadum land. And the AI typically doesn't cross into enemy territory to attack a different territory. And they no longer border me at the Rui, so I'm actually thinking these guys are going to F off to the north, which would be fantastic. Um, let's check Rockburg again. Without question. I could take it so damn easily. Walk Marauders. Okay, kind of a tough unit to take down, but far from impossible. A unit of spears and a unit of archers could take it. And then I give it to Rohan. <laughs> and I get... Uh, what do I get? One of the best units of it. So that's another unit of Hetherbin just waiting for me, which is plenty of reward. My lord. Yes, my lord. Let's do it. Um, I'm going to park you on the bridge in the hope that next turn you'll have enough moving range. Take it. And if they somehow attack me, then we'll have you on the bridge, which is a bit of an extra advantage. Over here, elves. Just going to try to move a little bit north to block that path if they go for Dondrak. And I should be rounding off the episode here, but... I'm having too much fun, I don't want to quit, so I'm going to play a little bit longer. <laughs> Hope you guys don't mind that the episode's longer. I just enjoy myself too much. Uh, how are my finances looking? Mm, they're pretty okay. I'd still love to build in these kind of places just to get more money, but... Like a mining network in Amonlang would be pretty good, but... I'd prefer to upgrade my Builder's Guild before I do so. Uh, I'm almost considering building stuff like a... Was it a tavern? Because that gives me some money? No. Oh, I thought it did. Never mind. Yeah, none of this is really worth it. Yeah, my economy is still, like, it's a little bit slow. I mean, my, my income's quite okay, but my, my expenses, my army upkeep is quite up there. Can probably be a little bit smarter about that. Right, anyway, let us press the end turn. Enough blabbering. Congratulations. It's a good thing I don't have to, like, buy a gift for every time someone gets married. Alright, please, Dogoldor, don't take that settlement from Rohan. Don't do it. Don't. Just go away. I'll, I'll fight you soon enough. They're gonna do it, aren't they? It depends on the culture of the... Ah, oh, yes. They got intercepted. They walked into my, um... Zone of control thingamajig, so they couldn't move any further. Perfect. Ah. Oh. That gives Rohan an extra turn of that settlement, and I can kill them, and then they'll be fine. Right. Imladris under siege. Edras. Oh, no. Edras under siege. That is some bad news. That is some really bad news. Edras already under siege. Huh. That's really fast. A pretty big army at that. Wait, where did it go? Wait, why are you so blind, mate? There you go. Oof. No wonder Isengard or uh, Rohan is getting trampled. Look at all these units. Like, Isengard got a lot of troops all of a sudden. Well, Hammer, I wish you good luck because I doubt you'll win that battle. You got such a big army here that you really need to be using, man. Anyway, let's help out Rohan as much as we can by a quick grab of Rockburg. <laughs> they won't see that one coming. Taking the fight to Isengard. 
Yes. I'm not arriving out of nowhere at Helm's Deep to help them out, but I am... I am doing my part a little bit. I'm helping out Rohan against Isengard. Very much so to keep them alive a bit longer. Another cruelly exacting tax man. No! I say no to these increased taxes. Screw you. Okay. Oh, that's actually going to be pretty easy because we got that nice hill. Wait my orders. I really should be running off the episode though because I'm going way over my time. Way, way, way over. This shouldn't be too hard though. We got spears, we got archers. They're lining up, waiting to get slaughtered. Isengard probably left their northern border undefended because they're like, oh no, who lives there? Some pesky elves. As if they ever leave their woods. They'll just let us destroy Rohan undefended. Charge me, I dare you. I have the ultimate anti-charge ability. There's nothing you can do. Just because there's nothing you can do doesn't mean you need to do nothing. Intercept them. There we go, perfect. Toot toot the horn! Oh, you can't toot the horn because you have shield wall. Keep shooting him. Yes, yes, I know you travel from Lorien. I know you offer bows from Lorien. Don't have to repeat it every two seconds, mate. Alright, get in line. Yes, yes, yes. Perfect. Free Hitherbin. Helping out Rohan. Fighting against Isengard, which always looks good on the statistics, because then I can be like, hey, I fought Isengard within the first 40 turns. <laughs> so that's good. And maybe it sends a strong message to Saruman, who's chilling in the Orthang. Be like, hey man, don't mess with me. I mean, I doubt he'll be much impressed by literally two units attacking him. It's not like a full show of force. If he wants to crush me, I'd just have to send in one big army and there's nothing I can do. The campaign pretty much ends if he would have sent that Lurtz army towards me. Not even Haldir or Celeborn or both of them would have survived against that. But for now, we can claim victory against Isengard. There we go. Not the greatest result either, but good enough. Good enough. Boom. Eat it. <laughs> I shouldn't get too cocky though. Um, I'll occupy it. And we get Hitherbin. Wonderful. Right, let's uh, get the hell out of here. Because <laughs> I think I've pissed someone off. Hey, man, I bring another present. This guy loves me. There you go, mate. Take Rockburn. For the war effort, you know? Uh, yeah, gift it. I accept this of course you do. An honor and a you should get some troops. Well, you get lots of cultures. There are no buildings whatsoever that allows you to get some troops. That's bullshit. Well, they're not going to hold on to it for very long, but you know. For the free unit of Hitherbin, that's absolutely been worth it. Alright, so I need to clean him up. That'll be for next turn. Um, or next episode, I should say. More alliances, nothing crazy. Ah, Lorian Scout, wonderful. That should be a uh, skirmish cav unit, right? Ah, frick it isn't. I thought it was. <laughs> oh, they're not very good compared to Hetherbin then. Oh. I'm going to keep these guys here because they get free upkeep there. Uh, what I will do, because otherwise I'll forget that, is plop down a watchtower to as far north as possible. So you can still get... Don't tell me. Right, I'm gonna cheat, because... Am I gonna cheat? No, it's at 70%, I don't need to cheat. I almost consider just... It's one tile, come on. But no, 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 no. We're not gonna do it. Um, if, if this is gonna lead to a rebellion at Fernholm, I would have cheated, because I'm not gonna lose a Solomon <laughs> just for that. But uh, yeah, one turn, we can, we can sit there at 70%. I just really want to know if they got a lot going in Goblin Town, but I'd need a spy for that. At the well, actually, I can get a spy at Fenholm, right? That might actually be worth it. Taking Goblin Town would make sure that there's no goblins on this side of Hethaiglid. It would be a little bit harder to defend, but oh, so be it. Uh, can we retrain them? No. Can I train this Girthon? And actually, yes, I can. So I'll be able to retrain them soon. Right, I have some money to spend. I would still like to spend it in this episode, because otherwise I'll forget. 
Uh, I also need to move my diplomat towards yes. Dorwinion. Yes, uh, Leofric's bowing is Mordor Gulderland, so they got another settlement here. Oh, that's annoying. Should have just given Brown Bow to Rosklund to Dale then. I would have already been on the move. You know what? I'll leave behind Haldir in the Rosklund for now. So Caliborn can continue the war effort. It's just a waste of his potential not to be moving towards both surface. I really want to get rid of those Dorgoldur remnants as fast as possible. But let's see, they got Bursautis, they got Logarth, they got a settlement here. That's one, two, three, they got one here as well. Because I'm pretty sure they'll still get a Doomstack when they fall below X amount of settlements. But uh, yeah, I'm not sure where that one will spawn. It will probably spawn near Dorgoldur, which doesn't really matter because then they'll have to walk all the way around and they'll never reach the border in, in time. So we got some farms at Dorlingva, which is good. It's a little bit of extra money, but most of these settlements in Merc would just produce no money whatsoever. So I'm actually considering just waiting and saving some money. Um, go to the fort. I need to be wise with my upkeep. Yeah, no, we'll, we'll save some money. Uh, I might spend more money when I do some battles here, because every battle is of three, free 300 gold coins. But I'm going to round it off here. I will already attack this guy, because otherwise I'll forget at the next episode. But I thank you guys for watching so so much the first episode of 2022 as i said at the beginning i wish you all the best hope you had a fun day and yeah i'll see you the day after tomorrow if everything goes to plan hopefully um with episode number five so thanks for watching and i hope to catch you soon